Hello, everyone. I'm Tammy Sharia, and I am delighted to welcome you to this special event, which is part of the Sotheby's Art Voices series, organized in partnership with Intelligence Squared. Today, we will be celebrating the work of fashion photographer Paolo Roversi. We will be exploring how artists have endeavored to capture women's souls in art and fashion photography down the ages and examine the connection between art, artist, muse, and model. And to discuss, I am delighted to have four brilliant guests today, joining me as we do in 2021 from all around the world via the magic of technology. Thank you, Apple, I guess. <laughs> um, first of all, we have Paolo Roversi, the photographer joining us from Italy. He needs no Very introduction. nice to be here with you, Camille. Hi, Paolo. <laughs> Paolo is known for his striking, intimate portraiture and classic visual language. He began his professional career in 1970 with photojournalism assignments, but soon switched his focus to fashion. After a period assisting Lawrence Sackman, Paolo started shooting his own fashion editorials and advertising campaigns, which over the years have made him one of the industry's preeminent image makers. His work has appeared in Vogue, Vanity Fair, and of course, many, many other magazines. Most recently, he shot the campaign for the Autumn Winter 2021 collection for Alexander McQueen. Welcome, Paolo. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here with so good friends like Natalia and Lauren and Jonas and, um, and you, Camille. Thank you. <laughs> Joining us from Paris also, is supermodel philanthropist, global influencer in the luxury and fashion scene, and mother of five, Natalia Vodianova. She is also a seasoned entrepreneur and impact investor, committed to improving people's lives and creating positive change in society. Her NGO, the Naked Heart Foundation, has been helping children with special needs since 2014. Natalia has collaborated closely with Paolo since over the last- 2004, Camille. <laughs> Over the last 15 years, if, I, if my math is correct, <laughs> and well, you've been featured in much of his work. Thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to hear more about your special relationship. Thank you so much, Camille. It's a pleasure. I celebrate Paolo every day and he's been instrumental in my career. So I, I couldn't miss this opportunity to say a few words about him. Thank you, Natalia. I celebrate your beauty every day too, you know. I have my <laughs> studio with all your pictures. I see you every morning and every night. So I spend my life with you <laughs> and with Aww. your images. <laughs> C'est beau l'amour. <laughs> C'est beau l'amour, oui. <laughs> also joining home. us from Paris. Also joining us from Paris. Paris is clearly very busy um, at the moment. I think it's Paris Fashion Week, which would, could explain um, why everybody in Paris right now. Um, we have the writer and journalist Laure Adler, who has recently published a fascinating book, Le Corps des Femmes, exploring how the female body has been portrayed in art down the ages. Welcome, Laure. Welcome, welcome. And nice to meet you and Paolo too. Your book just here beside me is a beautiful, wonderful book. Congratulations for your work and, uh, and your book. I'm, I'm sure it will be very successful. Our guest, who is also coming from Paris and straight from Sotheby's, Jonas Tabib, who is Sotheby's photo specialist and who will be leading the upcoming sale in the studio of Paolo Rovasi, which will present a selection of some of Paolo's most famous portraits, as well as rare books, cameras, and prints from his own collection. Hello, Jonas. And before I hi, go into yeah. hi everyone. This event is, is going to run for about 45 minutes. Towards the end, I think we'll be able to have time to take some questions from the audience. You can start submitting them now if you'd like. Underneath the video screen, there is a web form where you can enter your name um, and your question. To submit your question, all you need to do is enter your details and then click submit. Um, I do want to give Paolo the opportunity, obviously, to answer Lars's question. Um, Laura, would you like to ask him again before we start? I remember the yeah. question, what is beauty for me? 
You know, uh, yes. <laughs> until I met Natalia, I was always answering, beauty for me is a mystery, a, a, a magical mystery. I don't know what it is exactly. I can put words on it. It's very difficult. When I met Natalia, I, the answer, if you ask me, what is beauty for me, is just Natalia. Is the answer is easy. It's just there, the beauty look in the corner of the screen. <laughs> you know, beauty the first the time Natalia came to my studio, I thought it was an angel falling from, I don't know which sky, you know, falling in my studio. And it was, it was a miracle for me. And, uh, you know, for a, for a fashion photographer working with, with beauties, Natalia was like a, a miracle, a dream, you know, and uh, and uh, she 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 bring me in, she opened to me new horizons for the beauty, and she brought me in in new new fields, new new vision, and really uh, she pushed me in in some paths, some ways I didn't know before. And that is incredible for a photographer. It's really more than a muse. It's a, it's a muse inspiring every, every photograph, every, every moment. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed. I feel like I have to, I have to comment this just to say that, that um, it's, it's, it's strange. And I'm sure that Law has studied this um, uh, very closely that us women, we always find a way of of dismissing our beauty and and uh, and dismissing. Um, di di we don't see ourselves as beautiful. It's uh, and and in that sense, beauty is very much in uh, the eyes of the beholder. But as Audrey Hepburn said um, very rightly, is that uh, beauty is is in the in what we do in what we do with with our lives and definitely that's something that i thrive to keep the the um, the most important beauty is 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 our actions <laughs> but thank you paula for for this very very f f flattering oh, so uh, so you are, you, are, you are double beautiful because your actions are amazing and beautiful and and also your face and your body are beautiful as your action. So, so basically find someone the way that Paolo looks at Natalia. <laughs> <laughs> um, beauty is the perfect place to start because obviously the notions of female beauty have been evolved for thousands of years and artists and photographers have striven to capture various forms of the ideal from early Western depictions of Venus up to the present works like Sherman. We'll be hearing more about this a bit later with you, Loch, but I want to start off with you, Paolo. You have photographed over a hundred of the most beautiful women in the world, but beauty is important, yes, but it's not all that matters, right? No, but as Natalia said, is also the action. For me, a, a, a portrait is uh, something you have to do with the soul, you know, and. Uh, and, and the soul is the action, is the, if the, the love of the person bring inside all these things. And um, in something, something, for me, a new portrait is something, is, is something spiritual, is a spiritual experience more than everything else. So Natalia is right saying that the beauty is, is not only just the, the, the the geography of a face or of a body is much more than that. You, you, and that exactly what I, I, I try to catch when I take a picture is uh, for me doing a nude is try to, to take out all the mask and try to catch a glimpse of the essence of the persons. You have worked with Natalia on a shoot for Egoist in 2003. I believe it was your first. Could you tell us a little bit more about your shared journey since then? I'm not sure it was it the, first, the first, but it was... No. It was not the no, first, no, I don't think so. No, it was not the first. It was not the first, but, but it was a very important, very important shooting because, because uh, as you can see in the pictures, uh, was a, a great revelation for me and I think for Natalia too. 
uh, this picture was a revelation because we discover something very profound and deep and uh, and uh, beautiful. I, 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 sorry, I always repeat the same repeat the same words, but my vocabulary about beauty around beauty is very short and and poor. No, not at all. Um, Natalia, I would love to turn to you and hear about your experience working with Paolo. Can you describe to us your first encounter, if it wasn't that one, and what makes working with him so special? Um, no, it, it, it wasn't that one, although as Paolo has um, rightly said, uh, our egoist shoot has been very much probably our most iconic um, body of work together and, and, and a lot came out of, from it. But meeting Paolo was uh, really like meeting a long-time friend. I was, uh, I was actually pregnant with my first son, and um, my first son, Lucas, and we were shooting for Italian Vogue, and it was uh, in his studio, uh, which I was discovering for the first time, Studio Luce, which I have shot since then many, many, many countless countless uh, days and, and beautiful moments that we shared together with uh, Paolo and his team um, and, and um, really uh, he, he was a friend from the day one in the way that he, he really lifted me up as a, as a, as a person, as a uh, he, he, you know, meeting Paolo, and I remember so well, uh, kind of his his big smile and his big kind eyes, and and his big hands that were holding this uh, big camera, and everything about Paolo is is very <laughs> very you know larger than life. He is just this amazing personality. Um, I think at the time he was really the first Italian man that I was uh, uh, that I encountered, and of course this also um, the Italian music and and Paolo so charming with his deep Italian voice. I, you know, it was uh, it was uh, I definitely uh, was also enchanted with Paolo as a as a person as a, as this. Uh, and the know, good Italian uh, food at lunch. <laughs> uh, and, and the Italian food at lunch, of course. We had the most delicious uh, lunches at Studio Luce. Oh, yes. And everything was perfect and, and nothing felt like work. And, um, and uh, I remember actually the first nude that we did uh, was at the first shoot because I was pregnant. And Paolo, uh, I was quite visibly pregnant already, and Paolo said, oh, we have to capture this, um, this moment, uh, you know, of, of your belly for you. Um, and, uh, and he gave me beautiful prints of uh, my first pregnancy that are very, very precious to me. Um, and, 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 and so the second time when, I, when we were when we were doing Egoist and uh, Lucas was born already, we, uh, it, so it was just natural that, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the sort of the nude part and, uh, uh, and, and really it was like coming back, coming back home because I knew everyone. And uh, also it's important to say that Nicole Vishniak, uh, our dear yes. Nicole Vishniak played the, uh, a huge role as well in this uh, in this moment because uh, she gave us the cover. I was I was a young model. I was not known at all, but uh, she trusted Paolo, who who said no, she, you know, she, we she simply <laughs> she felt in love with those pictures and with you. Who you couldn't? Know? They're just as you said, iconic, truly iconic. We've heard Paolo talking about how he strives to capture the soul of a woman. In the process of working with him, have you discovered parts of yourself that maybe you didn't know were there that he's helped reveal? Yes, that's a very good question. It's um, because you, you know, I, I, I believe that as a person, you, 
you you evolve all your life and and definitely there are certain encounters that 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 are that that are significant in terms of your personal growth and um and f and for me you know paulo really simply the way the way he um the way he talked about me just now you know he always made me feel very beautiful very um very comfortable and uh and and he definitely made me come out when i met paulo i was still very much in my own shell and and as a person it took me took me a lot for me to come out of that shell because i i never felt um beautiful um as i was growing up i <laughs> i didn't i never really thought about be, becoming a fashion model or be, becoming a, a, or just even leaving my neighborhood and and so when all this was happening to me of course it was um sometimes uh, sometimes overwhelming success was overwhelming but never with paulo because paulo just cared about me he didn't care about my my success or my campaigns or you know it was really an intimate moment between photographer that um and friend who only wanted to know me and 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 that that was um that meant a lot and and that definitely built up my my confidence uh and and as a model as a woman in in many ways that that helps when someone sort of interested in uh, in in you as a person and uh, and in what you have to give and doesn't look at it as and that's what's so beautiful about nudes because um fashion photograph can be quite isolating for a model uh, it's fair to say i love i love my part of uh fashion photography because i love playing different roles i love changing clothes i love changing attitudes and it's uh i use that i use very much clothes and makeup in my everyday life as an empowerment tool but then when you have someone like paolo who who makes you extremely confident um as you are and and in a in a situation where you are actually probably your most vulnerable self being nude but the, the, then it's just something something uh something beautiful and um and very empowering i i personally um love those images and i think that uh, a woman that that um that is naked is always more beautiful than than a woman that is dressed and and i think that um that goes for all women they just uh, so all need me. paolo to to bring it out of them paolo what is your secret you must tell us how do you bring out that raw identity in the soul of a model no uh, natalia is using a word i like very much is very rare to use in fashion photography is the, is the word friend is true we, first of all we we have been friends uh believing trust in one each other and trying to do something together in a friendly way and um and respecting the other person as a person not as a model or as a photographer and natalia says the a, a nude is a, the beautiful picture of a, of a woman and i think so too i think i think for me a nude is the the, the most elegant as a purest way of a form of a portrait you know and i truly believe it i think is really the purest and most elegant way to take a portrait is to do a nude and uh, for me is really something spiritual maybe this is coming from my education uh, in italy I had a religious education so I was educated with the with the religious painters like uh, Botticelli and Raffaello and uh, and Giotto etc etc and uh, so for me the new oh we've been something very pure closer to the divinity than to something more more vulgar for me 
when you say the idea that nudity is vulgar, is a, it's a nonsense to me. For me, there is nothing more beautiful and natural than a naked human body, whatever gender or shape, but the figure, the image of a human body for me, like Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, is, is something divine, is something really beautiful. And Hola. the soul itself, how do you capture the soul so that it comes out of this body? I, I'm not sure but I catch Paolo, the soul, can but... I, can I answer this question for you? Yes, please. <laughs> if I may. Help me. Because I think Help that me, Paolo is an artist. So he cannot really say how, but maybe me being in front of the camera, I can, um, I can explain what I feel when, when, when I... I think revealing my my soul to Paolo. I think it's all about building trust and 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 creating atmosphere of of trust and 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 atmosphere where everyone is comfortable. There is absolutely no way um, that I would be doing something I was uncomfortable with. I think by now the industry knows how strong-minded I am, and and. And, and uh, so this sort of distrust that is built over conversations, over time spent together, over people that every single person, because of course we, this trust and, is not only this built trust by be, power. It's almost it's that, a phase. Yes, it's, it's also the, the everyone around are so nurturing uh, from the makeup artist to hairdresser. You know, remember it was Odile and, and Stefan. I mean, it's all the, all the people who are uh, almost like family. So it's, it's all the people who, who love their job, who love what they do, who don't do makeup and hair. They, they create artworks together with Paolo, it's a, it's a teamwork. So we all get into this moment. And when you're in this moment of comfort, of course, all that the camera sees is, is a person. It's, if you would take a picture of anybody at this moment, then you would see them because they're in their comfort zone. And that's how the soul comes out, I think. Paolo, you've just shot the Alexander McQueen Autumn Winter 2021 campaign. And Natalia was just mentioning how sometimes the clothes can be a little bit isolating for a model. How do you, um, how do you make garments work in your photography? What role do they play in your images? No, I think a fashion photographer, of course, uh, it needs a, 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 a dress and, uh, and uh, like this one, this is from the last uh, Alexander McQueen campaign and designed by, by Sarah Bar Barton, Barton, sorry, Sarah Barton, uh, a beautiful fashion designer. And, uh, and for me, a fashion photograph like this one is, uh, is a double portrait. It's a portrait of, of the dress and the portrait of the woman who, who, who has this dress on. And, uh, but the portrait is still, uh, the presence of the woman is still very important for me. It's not just, a girl smiling to the camera or, or taking a certain position, I, I always try to, to catch to catch something more and deeper of the of the woman. Thank you. Yes. Let's take a step back to a time before photography existed. Loch, I mentioned earlier that you have recently published a book describing how the female body has been portrayed throughout history of art starting with early depictions of Eve, the Madonna and Venus, to right up to the present where you examine the works of Marina Abramovich, Nan Goldin, Cindy Sherman. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, but I want to ask a question to Natalia and Paolo. I think the beauty is a construction. And I think also it is a research, a research not of the appearance, but not about the body, but it's a research of the soul. And I think Natalia is like an angel. And I think uh, Paolo saw in Natalia a model perhaps of the Annunciation of the Vierge Marie. And the work of Paolo 
I think it's a result of uh, ancient peinture. He mentions uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he mentioned Botticelli, he mentioned Raphael. And I think, and I want to ask Natalia if she, uh, if she thinks about the beauty, is for her, is it for you, Natalia, a research of, uh, of your soul? The beauty. Now, uh, maybe I can answer for Natalia. She answered for me before. I can answer for <laughs> her. Spiritual work, a spiritual work. It's a spiritual work, yes. I think yes. the beauty in the way you are showing us is a gift. It's not a construction, it's a gift. Uh, as I say in the beginning, Natalia for me, is the, since the first time I saw her as an angel fallen, fallen to, into my studio from, a, from a, a, a magic sky, from a miracle sky, you know. Uh, and uh, it's not a research for me, it's really a gift. And uh, you have to take this gift as it comes, of course, in my subconscious, all the paintings of my childhood, of my, of my youth, are coming out and uh, and uh, and are there, as you know, as you say, Botticelli and, and this beautiful Madonna. Natalia could be the Madonna, could be any any Madonna, could be any angel, could be very easily because she has this this, this purity on her, and the purity is a gift too, you know. When the first time Natalia was looking in my camera. Uh, her look was so, so pure, her eyes, there was a kind of transparency, a purity in her eyes that it was for me a, a, a open, open door, an open door to, to all these images, to all these uh, memories of these paintings and, uh, and of this art be, before me. So, so I was uh, inspired by, by, by this look to, to create. And you were, saying, to, you, to... you were saying at the beginning, you were, you were telling me about Saint-Exupéry. I feel like that kind of... We Saint-Exupéry because in the Little Prince there is this, this famous quote, here is my secret, what is invisible to the eyes is visible to the heart or something like this, I don't remember the exact words. But... That's, that's so beautiful and, and it's, it's so true. And if I, if I can give just a little remark um, to your question, Lor, I, I, you know, there is two types of beauty, physical and, and, and your soul, your, your, you know, what makes you, your character. Both require a little bit of work and investment, and uh, and and physical is um, is uh, simply about certain certain disciplines. So it's quite easy for me because I I come from um, a, a, a background where discipline and uh, and hard work or, or it was uh, just a, a common uh, was a given. Um, but in terms of in terms of uh, character and and that sort of and and soul, it's 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 a lot of work because it's. I think that as humans, we are we can be um, we can be flawed uh, very quickly and and very easily if we get into temptations of. Uh, of life, especially if we have easily access uh, to them, and I, I, I believe that um, life is about um, is about joy, is about happiness. But I also believe that this is something that we choose every day, and and actually it's a, it's a, it's a not a always a simple choice. We have to really decide to make that choice. So it's a lot of work because on everything in life we can look as a gift or as a curse and 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 i don't know i i've I, maybe i'm speaking a little something very philosophical but i i for me for me beauty is really about 
again, I, I repeat myself, but it's really about actions, actions, kind actions towards others, kind actions towards yourself as well. This is, and, and staying positive because life is, um, uh, opens up to you when you compare your life to other people's life. And I, I find a great um, way to, to, to practice gratitude by always remembering not only where I come from, but also what I can do for people I, in a way, left behind when I became uh, successful. So this is, um, this is my, <laughs> my long-winded answer. I hope it will, uh, will help. No, but uh, you're right. But I, I want just to add a little thing before I let to, then I let to speak Jonas, that is very silence, silent. But I want just to add one little thing. You know, when we were talking about the construction of the beauty, of the purity, the purity is an important word. For me, purity is the is the contrary of a fake seduction or, or when a mother stay in front of me, try to seducing me or to be to, to appear appear beautiful and uh, she want to please to someone, to something. I hate this. I like when it's very pure and there is no 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 game around. And uh, this for me, and Natalia is like this for me. Is since the first moment she was so spontaneous and so simple, so honest, so so humble, and this I loved that 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 beauty. This is beauty too, you know. Voila. I have two questions, one for yes, Natalia and one for Paolo. Natalia, you said a few minutes ago that when when you were young, you don't know you were beautiful. Who said to you that you are beautiful? Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And the question for Paolo is, uh, how, do you, how do you know that a person is beautiful? It's a feeling, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emotion I have. And uh, I, I, I can classify one to, to 10, Beautiful, less, more and more. It's just an emotion. is is a a, a a a great feeling and uh, and uh, is as is the same feeling you have when you are in front of a night of a beautiful painting. How you can say it's beautiful? Why? I don't like to analyze the beauty. You know, it's just an emotion and. Uh, a, a, an experience, a strong experience. I don't know how to analyze and how to explain. Yes, but the beauty is not the same signification. In 19th century in France, the beauty for the woman was to be very big. And now it is not to be very big. So how do you explain the, the evolution of the beauty of the woman, Paolo? I think it's not the beauty of the woman, it's, I think the, 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 um, is a, is a so, 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 social, uh, you know, everything is moving all the time. Uh, uh, today, like fashion, today is, uh, to, this season is, uh, is a blonde girl, and uh, next season it will be uh, the brunette girl uh, more desired than the blonde. Uh, and uh, and it's an evolution. This is hard to describe. Of course, the women of Renoir are not the same than the women of Modigliani or, or and uh, not the same body or, or Chile, you know, and uh, uh, and and um, so this is changing. I don't know why is. Uh, is, I, think, I think it's a social, social movement. I, I can't analyze that, you know. It's, it's I'm going to turn to Jonas me. now because poor Jonas has been kept silent. Maybe, maybe um, Jonas can answer this question exactly. better than me. It's the evolution, the evolution of the... Jonas, the upcoming, the upcoming Sotheby's sale will celebrate beauty, elegance, and the refined personal taste of... Paolo Rovasi. It will not only feature some of Paolo's most prominent works, but also include pieces from his personal collection with works from Richard Avedon and Robert Frank to Irving 
Irving Penn, sorry, and Diane Arbus. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about this collection? Absolutely. So um, Paolo was very kind to host us in his studio a few weeks ago to discover uh, the intimacy and the magic of this place that uh, he and Natalia was just uh, describing. So, um, so we were taking really the opportunity uh, now with Paolo and his recently published book uh, Studio Luce uh, and the exhibition he just had in his hometown in Ravenna to do a tribute to his uh, work and to the Studio Luce. Uh, so what we did with Paolo is we selected a few uh, rare portraits and images of Natalia, of course, uh, taken in, in the studio, but also cameras and books uh, and works from his uh, personal collection. Uh, and the idea of the auction now is really to sort of recreate the, the spirit of, of this place. Um, now I was going to speak of one of the images that we have uh, that Paolo was just mentioning also uh, that is from the collection of Paolo and uh, his wife Leticia. This one, yes. Uh, we are lucky to have this example of a beautiful print by Richard Avedon, uh, which is like a Modigliani, really, uh, portrait of the Donna Marella Agnelli, uh, Agnelli's, uh, Gianni Agnelli's wife. Uh, and Avedon at the time considered her as being the most beautiful woman he ever photographed. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And, uh, and the other image I wanted to speak about was this one, uh, Portrait Ruse by Paolo, which I particularly enjoyed uh, because actually when the print arrived this morning, we are, uh, we are hanging the show, as I said, uh, at Sotheby's and uh, the print arrived from the framer this morning and uh, we were several people uh, looking at it and um, as we were hanging and uh, and we were all really astonished by how vibrant the, the, the colors on the dress are uh, and that's a dimension on also on beauty on you know how you how you translate that on on paper and uh, and so you can't really maybe it doesn't really translate on the screen but uh, you, you have to come and see the exhibition here at Sotheby's to, to really uh, experience also the, the, the prints of Paolo. So there are the images, but I want to emphasize also how, how well uh, the prints and, and the experience of, of the physical prints uh, is really a beauty as well. Paolo, unlike painters, it is more unusual to find a photographer collecting other photographers. How did you become a collector? I became a collector because I, I, I have a strong, always strong relation with the print. For me, the photo, photography is, is the print, is a piece of paper, you know, it's not a, an image just floating on the screen of an iPhone or of, of a computer. It's really, it's really an object and, and uh, the experience to have a, a beautiful print like the Avedon print in your house hang it to your wall is much different than to look this this image in a book or in a computer, you know. And uh, I learned uh, this experience from uh, my wife, Letizia, who was collecting paintings and, uh, and uh, I discovered that living be, uh, with art is, is, uh, is very, very strong. And uh, a house is not the same with art or not art in the inside. Voila. So I start to collect in photographs too, to put beside the paintings of my wife. <laughs> Natalia, you've worked with some of the most eminent photographers in the world. And at the same time, you've managed to cross over into the new world, the digital space. How do you experience this difference between traditional photography and this new way of producing images and distributing them? It's, it's very different process. It's very different feeling. It's very different pace. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't downgrade what, what's happening today on some social networks. Uh, uh, there are some beautiful images on Instagram, some very interesting artists that are emerging artists who are who are completely transforming themselves and redefining actually fashion and, and becoming a great influencer in, in, even in our world. Uh, therefore, it's, um, 
it's very, very inspiring and I follow some of these uh, interesting people. But, um, but for me, I, I've, I've, I've used mainly um, Instagram and, and other social media to just um, to, to, to share with, uh, to share a little bit of my personal life and a little bit of who I am and my interests. And uh, uh, actually my, my family, not even my children, but my grandmother and, and my, my sister, Oksana, who was born with um, uh, autism and really uh, defined my, my life journey. Uh, and and my my philanthropic work as well. She is very popular on my on my social media, and uh, uh, and I think it's a wonderful thing that we can we can share we can share about um, ourselves a little bit more because fashion world can seem uh, a very super superficial from outside. However, I always found that fashion uh, can be an incredible platform for change. And that's how I use um, my position in, uh, in fashion or in tech uh, that I'm part of since uh, some years to, to, to drive change because not one person can change something something important something significant but a group of people in collaboration can and and Paolo actually has been incredibly generous um, in uh, donating many seatings with him and I I don't even know how I, but definitely way over a million that we raised uh, for Naked Heart Foundation thanks to Paolo uh, photographing some some no, beautiful thanks to you, women. Thanks to you. <laughs> thanks to your you and your 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 work and your generosity and uh, and your your ideas. It's, I did I did nothing. You do. But I, I remember being in Paolo's studio and saying, Paolo, you have to be on Instagram. You have to share with the world who you are. You have yes. to, you know, who is this man behind the pictures? And and uh, <laughs> people, I, 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 you know, and so finally, we. It's actually my my business finally, partner Simone and Instagram. I. I came we on set Instagram up your Instagram. You. <laughs> I remember. Oh, you set it up for him. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yes. I had no idea. That's great. Um, Paolo, we know how important prints are to you. In a world of mainly digital imagery where the light is flattened on our screens and muted on the pages of glossy magazines, do you think the traditional way of taking photographs is under threat? No, no, no. I think he's still there, and I think the many young photographers are coming back to work uh, with the uh, with the ancient uh, or classic, uh, you want to call classic photography, done with the silver, done with the, the all the chemical chemicals and uh, and the paper photography paper. I don't think it's finished. No, no, no. Loch, as an art historian, what are your thoughts on today's portrayal of women in art? I think uh, it's very important to say that uh, with the uh, uh, women's liberation movement, women could fi finally be the thinking subject, trying to understand what it means to be a woman, inventing an autonomous artistic field that continues today and uh, Paolo does not say the contrary because I think Paolo, uh, for Paolo, it's very important that it exists uh, woman photographer. And uh, I think uh, the evolution of the situation of the woman is being um, uh, transforming, not only in a body, in appearance, but in a subject thinking. Of course, of course, Laura, yes. I agree Jonas, with you, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, no, I was just uh, uh, reflecting on what uh, Paolo was saying that uh, on, the, on photography per se, I think we, we are just, you know, moving from uh, a culture of, of photographs uh, as object and, uh, and prints uh, like we have uh, here from, from Paolo 
and uh, digital images, of course. So, for example, for this Irving Penn nude that is coming up uh, from Paolo and Leticia's collection, it's you know beautifully constructed like a like an ancient marble sculpture, really. And uh, it's this is emphasized by the the technique and the and the grayscale of. Uh, a platinum print, so it's a technique that is used to have a very rich gray scale, and and so this emphasizes the beauty and the and the richness of uh, of the print. So uh, also the fact that when you have uh, photographs uh, in a physical way, you have uh, uh, another um, another way of uh, having the impact of the the proportions. You know, if it's large or small, if it's spectacular. Or, or intimate. I think we we probably are losing a little bit of that while we are looking on our phones, you know, because photographers before were really uh, thinking thoughtfully about uh, about the proportions. But that also brings us to to paintings, right? And and uh, the the work that uh, Laure is describing in her book. Laure, yes. would you like to go into more detail about your thoughts on this? Yes. Yes, I can say with uh, with Paolo that uh, beauty can be an abstraction. Uh, it's only it's it's not only a reflect of the appearance, but it's a result and it's uh, also an abstraction. And everybody has one um, feeling of the beauty, and I think it is a subjective thing. Yes, I think so too, yes. There is not a beauty for everyone. I think it's very subjective. For you, is this is beautiful, for me not, and, and the opposite. I think it's very subjective. You like or you don't like, it's very, fortunately, it's very subjective. And it's an abstraction, you're right, it's, it's, it's not concrete, it's not, uh, it's not uh, two and two, four, it's not uh, like this, it's not mathematical at all and it's not uh, scientific at all. We don't have no a lot of time left, so I wanted to ask you for one last question and then we can move on to the Q&A. Um, I want to hear from all of you what you're working on next and something that you're looking forward to now that the world is hopefully almost normal again. <laughs> um, Laure, let's start with you. What is, um, what is coming up for you? I work on gender studies, uh, and I don't know what is a beauty in the future. Uh, what is what is is it male beauty? Is it female beauty? It is not a beauty. I don't know. Me neither. But it's very interesting to to, yes, to try to yes, investigate yes, there. Yes, very very interesting. Natalia, any exciting things coming up in your schedule? <laughs> I, I, oh yes, I'm live. Um, I do have a fundraising event and um, I, I, I'm working um, on a lot of projects, but one that is um, most dear to my heart is, um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to talk about it, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm launching um, um, a mask. I've actually been working on masks since 2017, and we've launched recently Masuku, which is made from uh, absolutely recyclable and compostable materials, so it's very environmentally friendly, unlike 99% um, of masks out there. And we, we just launched an absolutely compostable mask that you can just plant in your garden or just even throw in the, in the bin because it will in two weeks it will be nothing it will be part of the of this earth um, and biodegrade uh, by itself and and that and is I, I interesting still see for your for next book your, yes. the beauty in your next book is out of the mask <laughs> yes, it's true though. It's masks, yeah. masks are well. We we didn't think that it would become so quickly so scaled when we were st when we started working on masks in 2018, but we 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 had a, a, um, uh, had um, 
we had a, a lead um, ahead of many other mass companies, so we, we really have developed something fantastic. So yes, look out That's for incredible. it. Incredible. Um, Paolo, I know you're going to be busy. Do you want to tell us a little bit more? Oui, is uh, my you have a next? My biggest pro biggest project is uh, a next exhibition at uh, the Musée Galliera in Paris in March 22, and I work in this exhibition and the book of this exhibition. Great maybe news! Finally, museums a, will, are open again. I will put oh. a mask. I will put a mask for the opening. <laughs> <laughs> An Italian mask. We'll we'll do a special. We'll do a collab, Paolo. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I love the idea of a mask. So do we have time for some questions? Yes, I think we do. I already have one that got sent through. The question is going to Paolo. It says, Paolo, you were my favorite photographer. Do you think we had more freedom of expression in the 80s? And can we recapture the fun of that era today? And sorry, I don't can understand we, the end. Can we recapture the fun of that era? Of the 80s? Yes. It's always, always hard to go back. We, we are always going on and it will be different. Maybe it will be even more fun in the, in the next 10 years, you know. You have not to go back, to look back. The 80s are past and it's finished. The 60s, the 70s, is gone. We have not to recapture. We have to do something no. new with, with the mask, with the new lore book, and, uh, and with my new exhibition. We have to look at the future. Laure, you I mentioned so. that beauty is a construction. I have a question for you. How do you think that beauty is constructed in 2021, and how has it changed with time? I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps the beauty will be mechanic uh, attitude. I don't know. I think uh, we don't know where will be the beauty in the space. Perhaps uh, we will live in, in Mars in 20 years. And the beauty will be with the scaphandry. <laughs> and we can't see our faces, our bodies. We were like robots uh, in the space. Perhaps the beauty will disappear of the imagination of the men stories. I don't know. It's a philosophical I so. question. I don't think so. I think beauty is very important. <laughs> and beauty and, yes, and art, art so. is very important in our life. Paolo, you have a lot of fans because I have another question that says, Paolo <laughs> is one of the biggest inspirations for us younger photographers. Paolo, you are a living legend for us. Can you talk us through your inspiration throughout the years? What is the process before every photo shoot? Uh, no, it just, I think it's just, when you work, I think it just, you have to, to have fun and to make, to be, uh, to be spontaneous and simple. And uh, there is not special inspiration. You have not to, to take, uh, the, I always say, the more you think, the less you see. You have not to think too much and to, to, to have many references or to, you have just to be simple and have fun working. This is very important. To be Thank you so much. I think, I think that's all thank we you. have time for, I'm afraid. Um, thank you so much to all of you for joining us today. Thank you to Natalia Vodianova. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you to Laura Adler, to Paolo Roversi, to Jonathan Thank you, Laura. Thank you for and your brilliant you, contributions to today's Natalia. events. Thank you, thank Camille. Thank you to Intelligence Square for putting it all together. Um, the sale, of course, the reason we're all here, the sale in the studio of Paolo Roversi is now online and open for bidding until next Friday, July 9th with um, also the exhibition at Sotheby's Paris opening this Monday, July 5th until Friday. If you'd like to know more about Sotheby's auctions, please visit sotheby's.com or the Sotheby's app. 
I really hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much to everyone for joining, you, but Camille. especially bye to bye. my four guests you, that were Camille. fabulous. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Camille. Thank you. <laughs> So, Thank you, Laura. I hope to see you soon, Laura. And yes, to have a nice conversation with you. I will go to Gaviera Museum. Ciao, Jonas. Thank you for everything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paolo. <laughs>